Welcome to this section 22, final section on Rahula's anthology piece, The Bodhisattva Ideal in Buddhism, A-Level at Excel Buddhism. Let's read it and then I'm going to analyze it. There is a significant difference between Theravada and the Mahayana with regard to the Bodhisattva Ideal. The Theravada, although it holds to the Bodhisattva Ideal as the highest and noblest, does not provide a separate literature devoted to the subject. The teachings about the Bodhisattva ideal and the Bodhisattva career are to be found and scattered in their due places in the Pali literature. The Mahayana, by definition, is dedicated to the Bodhisattva ideal. And they've not only produced a remarkable literature on the subject, but they've also created a fascinating class of mythical Bodhisattvas. The end. Learn that last quote. Let's have a look at it. Is Rahula right that there's a significant difference between the Theravada and Mahayana in regard to the Bodhisattva ideal? Yes, of course he is, but this is disingenuous. As Rahula thinks, there's no essential difference. It's just uh, different words. Um, the actual salvation is the, the nature of it. The essence of it is the same for both, and it's Theravada. Samuels discusses further the extent of the Bodhisattva ideal is in, in actual opposition, yet he too is um, like Rahula a, a Theravada. And like other Theravada apologists like Samuels, Rahula often conflates so much of Theravada as the content of Mahayana and this is something Basham would say we should be very critical of. It's a form of tactic. It's a polemical tactic. And we should remain objective in our study of Buddhism, and not sectarian as Rahula is. So, it, so there are significant differences between Theravada and Mahayana with regard to the Bodhisattva ideal. Is Rahula right that the Theravada, although it holds... Bodhisattva ideal is the highest and noblest does not does not provide a separate literature devoted to the subject. Does it? Um, does Theravada hold the Bodhisattva ideal as the highest? Not really. Kings, yes. Um, the Buddha, yes possibly some teachers, some translators in the 12th century. But we're really talking about the essence and the Arahat four-stage path is the real essence, the perhaps ideal, perhaps better teleos for Theravada. And Mahayana, it's the ideal of repeated lives of compassion, discovering your Buddha nature. Does uh, Theravada doesn't provide a separate literature? Well, of course, Theravada doesn't provide a separate literature. That's like saying, how could, uh, you know, how to book, how to become a king of Sri Lanka, or how to go back in time and become a Buddha. It's just not practical or useful as an idea. So what are, and what does Rahula think is the Bodhisattva ideal and the Bodhisattva career? Now we could go into this in some depth. Briefly, um, Rahula only thinks the Bodhisattva ideal is, is, is a sort of limited, ineffective set of practices that fails to help achieve Nibbana because it's so focused on the career of vowing to remain in samsara till your all beings are enlightened and developing these six perfections, and coming back life after life to every realm of pain, which he would think is a bit silly or a bit beside the point missing out on the true teleos or goal of Nibbana. Basham would agree that such ideas are found scattered in their due places in the Pali literature, but would suggest this points to the presence of sectarian religious divergence in the early Sangha institution of varied beliefs and practices that if you've done Basham, you'll understand that. But there is no one accepted orthodox original Buddhism. Perhaps there's a majority view and a minority view or 
collection of views of multiple schools. So is the ruler right? The Mahayana by definition is dedicated to the Bodhisattva ideal. Yes, but as he's argued, the Bodhisattva ideal really is another word for Theravada. So is Mahayana by definition dedicated to Theravada? No. Or are they dedica dedicated to the way he understands the Bodhisattva ideal, the kings of Sri Lanka or just the Buddha? No, they're not. So that's wrong in a sense. Finally, what does Rahula mean? Remarkable literature subject and a fascinating class of mythical bodhisattvas. When he says a remarkable literature, he's using coded language to say, yeah, nonsense or worse, heresy. A remarkable literature in the subject. And here's our great quote. That's created a fascinating class of mythical bodhisattvas. Again, coded language to say, mm, nonsense, probably heresy. That's sprawled this fascinating class of transcendent beings that just don't exist. And all of this sums up the attitude of the whole article nicely, and you should learn to be able to quote this quote. So that was Rahula. That's the final section. If you've come this far, well done. Give yourself a pat on the back.